A very good afternoon to you. This is Lunchtime News on TV1 and I'm Jamal Ratnayaka. Let's start off with a look at your headlines. Minister appoints three-member committee to investigate train collision in Panalia. Farmers in Kajuata Dimulagala face difficulties due to lack of water. Mendocino complex fires become largest in California history. Moving on to those stories in detail now. Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation, Nimal Siripala de Silva, rather, has instructed to conduct a thorough investigation on the train accident along the upcountry railway line in Panalia yesterday. The minister note, ministry noted that they have informed the general manager of railways, SM Abbe Vikrama, to temporarily suspend the locomotive driver responsible for the accident. Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva has further instructed to appoint a three-member committee headed by the general manager of the railways to conduct investigations into the accident. According to a release issued, instructions have been given by the ministry to take disciplinary action against any employee who was found guilty irrespective of the positions they hold. In the release, the minister has said that it is saddening to see the trust placed on the railway service by the public being damaged due to the action of negligent employees. It was further noted that the locomotive drivers must do their job with responsibility as the lives of thousands are placed upon their hands. Meanwhile, the railway control room said the renovation activities of the railway line damaged due to the train collision is currently underway. An official said that one railway track on the upcountry railway line will be open until the repair work is completed. The railway control room said a disaster relief vehicle was sent from Colombo last night to speed up the repair work. Our correspondent reported the repair work is currently underway. Two trains on the upcountry railway line collided with each other last afternoon in the Panalia area between Rabukkana and Pulgahavala. 32 passengers were injured in the accident. According to police media spokesperson S. P. Ruan Gunasekara, the injured passengers have been admitted to the Kurunagala, Pulgahavala, Rambukkana and Kegol hospitals for in-house treatment. <laughs> General Manager of the Department of Railways said around 10 individuals who sustained minor injuries have left the hospital. In more local news now, farmers in Kajuatta in Dimulagala are facing difficulties due to the lack of water for cultivation activities. The main livelihood for most of these locals is agriculture. For a number of years, farmers in Kajuatta have not been able to successfully engage in their cultivation activities due to an issue in water supply. About 28 or 30 percent suffer from kidney diseases. The people here struggle to even find a grain of rice to eat. We don't even have rainfall, so we can't cultivate. When we have no means to live, this is what we do. We live off savings or by selling our belongings. As there was no rain during the previous year, our people have been greatly inconvenienced. As a village coming under the Mahavali development scheme, we have no irrigation system. It is very difficult for people to cultivate. We have to work to take care of the cattle, but we are facing a state where we can't even feed them. Due to these issues, the locals in the area have now started engaging in the dairy industry. But farmers charge the absence of a fixed price for their production have led to another problem. Even though the Agriculture Board has provided them with an insurance scheme, issues remain in collection of funds. VK Anura, who was earlier interdicted from his position, was reinstated as the Municipal Commissioner of Colombo. He assumed his duties today. He assumed duties following the hoisting of the national flag at the Colombo Municipal Council. Governor of the Western Province, Hemakumara Nanayakara, said he was reinstated after imposing several conditions to ensure investigations will not be hindered. Therefore, Acting Municipal Commissioner of Colombo, Lalit Vikram Ratna, will now serve as the Deputy Commissioner of Colombo. The National Water Supply and Drainage Board says several areas in Matale will experience a 24-hour water cut from tomorrow. 
The water cut will be in effect from 9 a.m. tomorrow to 9 a.m. on Thursday. The National Water Supply and Drainage Board says a water cut will be in effect in several areas of Matale for a period of 24 hours starting at 9 a.m. today. The water cut will be experienced in several areas including the Matale city limit, areas falling under the Matale Pradeshya Sabha and other areas including Aluvihare. The National Water Supply and Drainage Board has announced the water cut is due to an essential maintenance being carried out. The University Grants Commission states a hotline and a special office has been introduced to aid students who have been victimized in ragging in universities and other higher education institutes. The Commission requests all students to immediately contact the 24-hour hotline 0112-2123700 if any type of ragging is experienced. The Commission also requests students to inform university officials and the relevant police station of the ragging experienced. The special office set in place at the University Grants Commission will function on all days from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. except on government holidays. Prohibition of ragging and other forms of violence in educational institutions, Act No. 20 of 1998, is currently in effect. Those who are arrested under this Act will be unable to request bail and, if charged at courts, can be sentenced up to 10 years of rigorous imprisonment. The University Grants Commission also requests parents to be on alert of the activities and behaviour of their children, who are at universities and other higher education institutes. Still in local news. The bridge across the Kolamuna Oya that connects Bingiria and Urapotta has been in a dilapidated state for a period of five years. Villagers point out that the situation has put their lives in danger. This bridge was constructed in 1961. Our reports show that this bridge, which has been used for 50 years, has not been repaired. Although politicians gave temporary solutions to the issue, a, perman a permanent solution has not yet been given. In our political stories this afternoon, Minister of Irrigation and Water Resources and Disaster Management Duminda Disanayaka expressed his views on the issues surrounding the position of opposition leader. I think the position of opposition leader will remain as it is. I don't think there is a problem about the matter as the SLFP is a part of the national government. That is why we appointed our Sambandan as the opposition leader. So he will remain as opposition leader. Only the J.O. have turned this into a political matter. At a time when there is a conflict among the Rajapakshas over the next presidential candidate, the opposition is split. The public is expressing their displeasure over this matter. Kumara Vilgama clearly said that a war hero who is on pension is not suitable for this position. It has also been proven by law that it is not possible. I think MP Dinesh Gunawardene is attempting to divert the attention from an internal issue. They can solve their own matters. They expect solutions for their internal problems. Uh, making a group of parliamentarians and deputy ministers representing the United National Party met to discuss about renovating the National Media Centre. The objective of this committee, which was appointed under the Prime Minister's directive, is to ensure that the National Media Centre fulfills a greater service to the people. The few of us are here to discuss with the officials. We came here to obtain the services provided by the National Media Centre. We will extend our fullest support to aid the officials of the National Media Centre to provide a better service to the people. This is how greedy for power they are. In their minds, they have already won 2020. Now it is only a matter of deciding the President, Prime Minister and Speaker. That's good. In 2020, they will truly understand what happens. To be honest, I do not know the story behind it. He is a part of this government. He is someone who does a good job. He carried out his ministerial duties well. He helped us as well, regardless of the party. We would like someone like him joining us. Mujibur Rahman also addressed the media following the discussion. We feel sorry for Kumara Velgama after we heard his speech because he is a senior member of the SLFB. A group of new MPs are now attacking him continuously. 
Mahindra Rajapaksa should protect his senior members. If not, he will also face the same situation. Tumagi deshta naikyanu araksha karega thei thei na thei thei Mahindra Rajapaksa mahatera toh kadamay hamwe. And that's a wrap of lunchtime news on TV One. For a comprehensive report of these stories and more, simply log on to our award-winning website www.newsfirst.lk. Your next news bulletin will come your way at 1:55. For the News First team, I am Jaya Ratnayak.